warm word of welcome to you to Westburn in Ennis in County Clare in the Diocese of Killaloo. My name is Fintan Monaghan and I have the opportunity to share some thoughts on uh, an engagement that I had with Thomas Merton over the last number of months. I've always had a great interest in converts to the faith. I feel that somebody that converts to the faith or has a renewed sense of the faith that they always to read the account of where they're coming from, it captures a sense of the enthusiasm, I suppose, that uh, helps them to pursue um, uh, an in-depth conversation with faith. So I really enjoyed engaging with John Henry Newman last year and during the months of lockdown this year uh, with uh, Thomas Merton and his various works. Thomas Merton is an absolutely fascinating character, as, as, as you know, uh, as was John Henry Newman, uh, very prolific in, in their output in terms of uh, literary endeavour and uh, engagement with scripture and uh, all the different ideas that they had. So in uh, a little work called Peace Smiles, uh, published by Veritas, uh, I've got an opportunity to explore different aspects of, of Merton's life that really captivated me over the uh, last number, number of months. Starting, I suppose, with a description of Merton's phases in his life, uh, which is captured so well in the Seven Story Mountain. And he went through, I suppose, three big broad phases of life where, as a young man, he lived a, a, a life of an intellectual, a wild young student in, in many ways. And uh, it's interesting to trace, uh, um, I suppose, that a little bit like St. Augustine or St. Paul. Uh, and went through at, at, at one point in his life then a, a couple of different uh, conversions or, or changes in, in life uh, and was uh, baptized and brought into the faith and uh, decided to, uh, in a really intense way, to pursue the life of vocation by entering a monastery uh, out in, in Kentucky in, in, in the United States, a uh, Cistercian monastery. And there was the second phase then of, of his life where he pursued an intense relationship with the Lord through the solitude that the, the, the monastic system was able to, to give him and to be able to pray and to be able to enter into the life of, of meditation and contemplation and getting closer to God in a very deep way. And at the same time, because he was such a literary man and he was so talented in that area, pursued the vocation, the parallel vocation, you could say, uh, as, a, as a writer. And then the third phase of his life, uh, I suppose in his latter years, was where he, having withdrawn from the world during the time of um, the monastic experience, he began to engage with the world again in terms of peace and justice and the activism that was very uh, much uh, part and parcel of the United States and the world community uh, in the 1950s and the 1960s and the post-World War time uh, and all the different, I suppose, intellectual ferment that was going on and the social activism and the civil rights and uh, the peace movements and the ecological movements at, at the time. And then one of the big parts of the book was looking at his key work, which is the Seven Story Mountain. A fascinating work. I remember as a seminarian reading it and been really captivated by it. I could relate to it so, so much. And to be able to engage with it again in, in latter years, I found it even, even more edifying in many ways. I think there's something very special about reading somebody's apologia or spiritual autobiography, whether it's Newman's apologia or whether it's the Confessions of St. Augustine or whether it's the Journey of a Soul of St. Therese of Lisieux or Therese of Avalar. There's something so wonderful in, in, in engaging with that and, and tracing their, their line of thought. And a big part of the book is, is looking at um, some of the pure, I suppose, mystical magic that is in, in, in the uh, Seven Story Mountain uh, that became an instant bestseller to the total surprise of, of the monastic community and the whole world, really. The other areas that uh, I try and trace is, is um, the wonderful work that he has done in his books on contemplation and faith and monasticism and scripture and especially trying to encourage everybody, not just priests and religious, but everybody, lay people, to enter into that life of prayer and contemplation and meditation. The other area that I was hugely interested in, and I have a full chapter in the book, is uh, his interest in, in, in art, um, whether it was in, in the paintings and the abstract paintings that he did, uh, or in his poetry, which he was very prolific with as well, uh, and in latter years uh, as, as a photographer. The other big areas that are of huge interest is, is that of his 
third phase of his life, his engagement with the whole area of peace and justice and ecology and um, in the context of the Black Lives Matter movement during the summer, contemplating an awful lot of that and seeing the relevance of the various different works that he produced and the engagement that he had with the different peace movement people uh, and the ideas that he had on that which were groundbreaking uh, at the time and many people uh, took him really seriously in, in, in relation to, to that. And the final interesting area that I try and trace is his importance in terms of ecumenical and interfaith dialogue because he engaged with the religious traditions of not only our, our own faith, but Zen Buddhism and all the different religions of the East, to pick, I suppose, uh, the best of their religious tradition, their theology, their spirituality, and most of all, their prayer forms, uh, and try to integrate that into his own, own prayer life. So an absolutely, I think, a fascinating character. I was privileged to have the time uh, during the space that was available during the months of the lockdown to be able to re-engage with Merton again and delighted to be able to collaborate with Veritas uh, to produce uh, this little work called Peace Smiles and I hope you enjoy it. I'll finish with uh, the uh, probably one of Merton's most famous prayers called simply the Merton Prayer. It's similar to Newman's Prayer for Vocation and it runs as follows. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that I have the desire in all that I am doing and I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me in the right path, the right road, though I may not know nothing of it now. Therefore, I will trust you always. Though I may seem to be lost in the shadow of death, I will not fear, for you are there ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Amen.